Hello, this is the first video that will give you an introduction to the tools and some of the setups of using Active Inspire. This is the icon that will show on both PC and a Mac that will help you to access Active Inspire. Let us start from scratch. When you open Active Inspire, you will first see that the item here, Flip Charts, is selected. When Flip Charts is selected, all of these links will show, and these links are the recently opened ones. And then you can also import from a smart notebook. Uh, this is something that I have not seen used on our campus, so let's go ahead and select Flip Charts and create a new one. And I'll, I will show you some of the options that you have. And we'll just tell it close. And you are automatically set here to start. Note that the icon, the tool that I have is the writing utensil. It's not exactly easy to write with using a mouse anyway. When you're at the board with the pen, you will find it much easier to use. Additionally, you can select a specific profile. So note right here, you can switch profiles from authoring to specific subjects, languages, mathematics, so forth. I have one that I named Michaels. This is just the items, the tools that I frequently use. So let's go to languages and see what it offers. It's a little bit different. It has a keyboard that shows up on your uh, a, a ticker tape, a on, an on-screen keyboard. Uh, there are a variety, a variety of things that can be used that will help you in the specific subject you're teaching. In mathematics, it switches and gives you items such as a compass. Well, how, how does the compass work? Well, very amazingly enough, you can take this part of the compass and show how you would draw a circle. Now, all I did was I grabbed the tip of the pencil image and I dragged it around. So you can say delete. You say, well, I'm, I'm done with the compass now. So you can drag it over to the trash and it's gone. Normally you would have a toolbar up here. Well, if your toolbar doesn't show, the authoring usually brings your toolbar back. And it also brings this page browser option back to the screen. The page browser has multiple components. First, the page browser self icon, the first one, and that is to show all of your pages. That would go down here. So, that's similar to PowerPoint, when you look to the side, you can see all of the different screens that are in your PowerPoint. That's what you would see here. Second, 
we have the resource browser. The resource browser comes in really handy. There are some items in here that are extremely useful, uh, such as, let's say, grids. If you're, for some reason, using grids in a math lesson, for instance, um, and you're um, wanting to have the graph paper on the screen, then this is right. It, all you have to do is take the graph paper, say this is the one I want, and drag it and there it is you have it so I'm going to remove it by undoing and show you a few more examples such as lesson building tools let's say that I have a few items that I want to add on so if I have within my lesson I'm specifying well this is item number one and I want to make it very clear where I'm going in my steps. I can put my numbers right beside whatever I'm listing. So every time I make a reference to my students, I could say, well, notice how number one says, and then spell it out. Next, we have what's referred to as your object browser. Your object browser will come in real handy when we do some other exercises in, in the videos to come and you will sh see that every item that you put on your desktop will re will turn into an object for an example let me show you what a circle does okay now we see shape so it has this it has a name um, we can't rename it it's called shape and that's that is it so why do you need to know this why is it useful I'm glad you asked because I'm going to tell you the answer is if you have some shapes that you want under other shapes so for instance I'm typing um, I have a text. It's referred to as a text. I'm sorry. I called it. I called it a shape. Okay. I want this to be sorry. Make my box the right size because I want to make my text larger. Highlight it. I could go up here and say, well, I want it to be size 20. Still not big enough there. Well, if my text, if I add another shape, say, so, okay, well, I want to put a square, I want to put a, a rectangle underneath that. Oh, wait, I can't see my words now. What's the problem? Well, you've probably already decided what the problem is. And that is, text needs to be on top. So I can, over here on the left side, I can drag it up. I can drag it up I promise and there it is on top and it's in the box well now you've decided well yeah but I don't want the box to be orange border and a and a yellowish orange um, filling well that's where we come to our next ones I'm going to skip the the notes browser for the moment and go to the property browser in our property browser we can say well okay I want it to have a very thin border of black then let's bring it down to two and I want the fill in colors to be do I want it to be solid or gradient horizontal let's say gradient let's just say, make it a gradient color well that now you say well, but, I, but my text is dark black that's not very wise so well you can go back to your text and yet the way to do that is the best to go back to you to make sure you select your text well what's the best color then if you click it three times it'll select the whole sentence 
well, I'm going to pick something that's brighter. So white. White seems to work. So that's how you put an object and text together. And that is also why you have these layers. And you have to know what goes where. And you can put things on underneath the bottom layer title that you know are always going to be on the, on the bottom. And that's the same as the background. So you, you normally only have one background image. It's just a good way of organizing. Last but not least when it comes to this, you can select the whole thing by holding down your left mouse key and drawing a imaginary rectangle. And, and then notice that selected text and shape. And I want to hit Command G or Control G on the PC. On the Mac it would be Command G. What it does is it keeps them two as one. So the word the day is beautiful and the box are together. Let me undo that and show you what happens if I try to move the words the day is beautiful. See they're disconnected. So again I go back Control G for PC, Command G for Mac, and it's one. So that's the best way to make titles. And then we go to our Notes browser. Notes browser is where you would have notes in here that would tell exactly what is supposed to happen on any given screen. Okay, I have opened a flip chart as an example for you to see. If you opened somebody's existing flip chart that they lended you and said, hey, or use this, this is great for quadratic equations and this is the, this is the perfect flip chart to use for starting. And you open it, you may not know exactly what the first page is to do. The teacher knows what to do because they're the ones who designed it. You being the teacher, you're not sure exactly what everything is for in this given one. So if I look here on the notes, I can see this page uses actions to change the Z order of images in a layer. Well, let's go to our next page. We can go to our next page by these arrows right here. We go to right. Takes me to this one. This page uses actions to toggle the visibility of the answers to the questions. Well, look at that. When I roll my mouse over it, I've got a blue icon. So which cities host the landmarks below or shown below? So I think this is France. That's, a, that's just a guess. If I click on it, Eiffel Tower, Las Vegas, Fulgia. Yep, sure did. I'm suspecting this is the Big Ben in London. Now this one does not look familiar to me, so I'm going to click because I'm not too sure of the answer. That's because I've never been to Barcelona. So there's how it works. With these notes, I knew exactly what, the, what was going to happen by moving my mouse over. So for the sake of others, when you decide to develop something, you might as well make it useful for others to see. Let me go back this, to this page. Do you see how the answers are all visible now? And what if you decide, well, I want to use this in my next class, but I want the answers to show. Well, the developer made an I this icon as an action also. They just didn't put it in their notes. That act, This icon means to clear it. So I click, and it resets everything. This icon takes you, removes everything and makes it a, a moves the uh, browser and then I can move, bring the browser back. So if I want to get rid of notes or I want to bring notes in, I can click on this. And then next, this page uses stretch incrementally action on the graph bars to modify the graph. Okay, stretch incrementally. On the right is a graph that shows how familiar I am with various kings. Use the arrow to customize the graph according to your knowledge. So that means I can click on the arrows and it will either make it go up or bring it down. So Burger King. Well, I am 
We're very familiar with Burger King. Henry the Eighth. I'm a lot more familiar than that. So I can, let's move it up. King Arthur. Mm, about the same as King Henry the Eighth. So now you see how you can how this works. Now I will show you in yet another video how to create these to set it back to the usual. Click on that and it goes back to the normal settings. So that's your introduction to the tools. All the, the, the various tools over here are best discovered by just using them. Each one will be introduced as I cover different areas of using Active Inspire. That's it for this video.